Today we're gonna edit a car in Photoshop. I'm gonna show you exactly how you can make the car move. I'm gonna show you how you can make the wheels spin in a realistic way. I'm also gonna show you how you can make the background look like it's really moving forward. So in this video, it's really easy to follow. You can use my photo if you want. It's in the description of the video, or you can use your own photo if you want. But the most important thing is when you remember all these steps, you're gonna apply them to all your car photos. So let's get into this video. All right, I'm in Photoshop here. And as you can see, this is the photo we will be using. And if you look here, you can see the photo we have here and I have the car separately from the photo. I will link this PSD file also in the description if you want to use this. But if you're using your own photo, what you have to do is you have to remove your car from the background on a separate layer. And to do that, you can just simply take the pen tool and go around your car like this. Make sure you have part here selected. And when you go around your car, just close it again to the first point, press right mouse, make a selection. So you have a selection of your car. Keep the feather radius at one, press OK and then make sure you press Ctrl or Command C to duplicate that selection and you have it here, right? So I'm gonna skip that step because it's way too long to make that in a video. All right, we're gonna start from here. We have the background with the car and we have the car separately like this. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna disable this layer for now and I'm gonna duplicate the background layer with everything with Ctrl Command J. And now if I hold down Ctrl or Command and click on the car, it's gonna make this selection again. And I'm gonna use Generate Fill. So I'm gonna click on Generate Fill and click on Generate. And what I want Photoshop to do is I want Photoshop to remove this car from the shot. You can see here, this is fine. We have this now, and I'm gonna take these layers and rasterize it by selecting them both with Shift and pressing Ctrl Command E to rasterize it. Now we have the car here and we have a background without a car, just a little weird stuff going on, but that's fine because we won't see what's behind the car. Just want to make sure the edges are safe to kind of move this a little bit around like that, right? So this is fine. All right, let's work on the background. We want to create a movement. Now for the movement, we're gonna use this one. Let's for, for the safety duplicate this layer with Ctrl or Command J. And now we're gonna go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and select Path Blur. And with Path Blur, we can blur out the background. Make sure you select your background and add the car. All right, so here you can see this is the direction the movement should go. So let's just press Delete on this one. Let's delete it for now. Just take the first one and delete it. And we're gonna place our own dots. So first of all, let's make sure to place one there, somewhere where the horizon is out of the frame and in the direction the car is driving, like a bit like the road, like that, and press enter. This is our first one. And here we have the settings of this movement. So when we click on the end point, we can add a blur to the end point speed. So if you increase this, the blur is gonna increase at the end point. When you have stuff closer to the camera of your movement, it's gonna move faster. So you wanna make a little bit more, more blur on the foreground here and less blur on the background. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this one, the point, and we're gonna increase this. So let's say I wanna have a little bit more blur at the foreground and there in the back, it's gonna be a little less. And here we can select for the background. So you can define yourself how much you want it in the background. I think something maybe like 20, let's do a little bit more. So you can still see a bit of movements there. And at the foreground, we're gonna increase this. Here we can also set the speed of the movements. So I wanna keep it a little bit low so it doesn't get too much blurred out. I think probably something like this should be fine. Now, one of this line is not enough. We need to give Photoshop some more information. I'm gonna click another one and I'm gonna go with the road again, just like that. Press enter. And here we need to set the strength again. So let's see the strength we had was 284. Let's just copy that one and put it there. And let's see this one was 160. So I'm gonna select this one and put 160. And let's also check the speed, speed. Ah, oh, the speed is for the whole image, all right. Now let's click for the third one and do one more here. So I'm gonna move this down, press enter. And let's make sure to click this one. And let's put this to, let's say, we can just look at the image and see if this is nice. I think this looks nice. Let's keep it like that. And at the beginning, let's drop it a bit, a bit less there just like that. 
Now let's click one more here. Press enter. And let's increase the speed here. I'm going to increase that one like that. And the beginning here, let's move it a bit there. All right, now we have some movements in this car. I just pressed enter and you can already see how easy we created these movements. Let's now work on the wheels here. So I'm going to go to this layer, the car, and I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Ctrl Command J. So we have the second version. This one I'm going to disable for now. So I'm clicking on the eye. I only want to work on this one. Now let's go to filter, blur gallery, and select spin blur. And with spin blur, we can make the wheels spin. So we're getting this circle thing here, and we want to take the center and move it down to the wheels. And now we're going to take the edges and making sure it fits this image. If you have a little bit of a slow version of Photoshop, you might get a little bit of loading time. So what you can do is also use a smaller image. This all depends on your computer. Let's zoom in here and make sure we get a nice selection. So let me zoom in here. And I'm just making sure I'm also taking the, the rubber there. And let's just make sure everything is selected. I think this looks fine. What I'm going to do now is I just want to make sure I don't select the car itself. So let me make it a little bit smaller. Here we have the settings of the spinning effect. And with a blur angle, we can set the amount of spinning here. So at zero, it will be nothing. And here you can go up to how much you want these wheels to spin. So try to find a nice range. I think somewhere around 20 is fine. It looks like the car is really spinning around. You can go even faster if you want, but I think this looks really fake. It's way too fast. So let's do something around 20. I think this looks nice. You can also see the details of the rims there. So let's keep it dead. I have 15 here. I'm going to keep it at 15. And let's just keep those settings and press enter. Now, when I enable this layer, you can see the spinning wheel is gone because it's covering up this layer underneath it. So let's make sure that for the second layer, we're just using the background wheels, the rear wheels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this layer, the top layer, and I'm going to make like this circle selection with the elliptical marker tool. And I'm just going to make a mask. And that way it's only visible in the selection. All right, let's click on the car itself and not on the mask. Then go to filter, blur gallery and select spin blur. And basically we're going to do the same like we did with the front wheel. So let's move this again there. Let's make sure it's pretty small. And remember we used like 15. I think it was 15 for the blur angle. We're going to use it again. Ah, it's already here. You can see here 15. And now just making sure I have the right selection. So make sure you cover up the whole wheel and you don't go over the card like that because you need to do this a little bit carefully. Let's make this even smaller. You probably won't even see the rubber there. So, oh, this was 15. And I think this is enough. Press enter and that's done. And I can see how fast we created these movements. Let's put this in a folder and compare the before and after. We had this, now we have this. And it already looks like everything is moving around. Now to make this even cooler, I have something else that you could do to this photo. And that is to use some awesome brushes. I have my lighting brushes and I will use some of these brushes for light effects. So if you want to get these brushes, I will leave that video in the description. If you watch that video, you will get these brushes for free. They are for sale on my website. But if you watch the video that I link in the description, you will get them for free. And I'm going to apply some of these light effects to the car. So simply just clicking everywhere what I want to get some cool light effects. And that way I can create awesome lighting. And I'm going to use the spotlight here also on a new layer to create really cool light there coming from the background. And you can see how easy I can create these really awesome light effects. And just watch that video that I will link in the description to get these brushes for free. And then you can also create these awesome light effects. So that's it for this video. You can see how easy it was to create this kind of effect. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to check out my lighting brushes video to get these brushes for free. And until then, catch you in the next video.